Richard Soleil is our next speaker. He is ECREA Research Professor at the Catalan Institute for Research and Advanced Studies, currently working at the Universitat Pompeu Fabra. His research focuses on understanding the evolutionary origins of complex systems using both mathematical models and experimental approaches based on synthetic biology. Ricard is famous, among other things, for introducing the concept of terraforming endangered or human-made ecosystems to avoid catastrophic shifts. Please welcome Ricard. Thank you very much. I, I don't think I'm still famous, uh, not, not at least from this particular project. But I think it's a, it's a good uh, example, I believe, uh, that illustrates the idea of why complexity science is relevant, why we should uh, really use complex systems approaches to, to deal with really uh, big issues. To a large extent, the, the project I'm going to talk about, it comes from two uh, workshops that uh, I organized, I co-organized at the Santa Fe Institute. Uh, the motivation of those workshops were trying to find out um, an alternative path to analyze the origins of major innovations in evolution. This is so-called the major evolutionary transitions. And the, the basic idea there is that we live in, now in a time where you have synthetic biology, we have evolutionary robotics, we have artificial life, we have statistical physics. Uh, all these tools are capable of making us uh, rethink the potential uh, scenarios that allow major transitions to happen, and even to think in the lab, see if we can actually recreate transitions in other ways. So you can actually reinvent other kinds of transitions. And if you go, I'm referring to origin of life, multicellularity, sex cooperation, language, uh, consciousness, etc. But if you keep pushing that, um, actually, uh, well, that was the outcome of one, one of the outcomes of the workshop, a special issue on philosophical transactions, and that's kind of a, examples of systems that we have been capable of using or generating in the lab, that uh, some of them suggest that evolution has a limited way of uh, inventing. And if you, if you keep pushing that, um, we thought that an interesting, an interesting scenario on the large, large scale is what is, it's happening now. It's mentioned in the morning, the Anthropocene. We humans are creating uh, kind of a, an artificial biosphere because of the pressure we are making on, on natural ecosystems. And one of the major implications of that, and that's why I think this is really relevant to, to discuss that, um, Sonia Kefi there, is, she's one of the major players in building the theory. The, the, the theory of tipping points has a, a number of people who created that without big data, right? It's not a criticism, it's just, no. just saying. Um, one major implication of that is the presence of tipping points. So things are going, are going bad, we know about that. And uh, all models, for example, that analyze the behavior of semi-arid ecosystems, which is 30% of ecosystems in the planet, 30% of people in the planet lives there, okay? Uh, they are going to face tipping points. And uh, since all the predictions from climate models seem to suggest that the worst case scenarios are the ones that are happening, this means that although you go into the newspapers and you see these funny articles about what's gonna happen with air conditioning in 100 years in the future, uh, what, what the question really is what's gonna happen in a few decades when these ecosystems get into the, into the into the wrong place, okay? Because this is catastrophic shifts, uh, bifurcations that we know well, and all the models are consistent with that happening, okay? And for those of you who might not believe that, uh, this is, uh, this is, there is Israel, this is Egypt, and this is the, the frontier, right? And this, on one side, you have the desert state, and the other, the green state. So it's a bistable system. So what can we, can we do about that? And before I, I, I go to defend my idea, um, let me say that I, I'm not a believer in technology as the unique way of solving problems, okay? But we, we think that we need that. Geoengineering has been one of the scenarios where people have been thinking in, in, in trying to stop, uh, in a way, the consequences of, of climate change. Uh, the problem with these, most of these proposals is that beyond what we don't know, uh, imply staggering costs, imply that you are not removing CO2 in most cases, it's more like you are trying to, to make the planet colder. So we suggested a very different uh, scenario. So uh, why not geo bioengineering the planet? So in other words, why not to use synthetically created microorganisms to change things, especially to prevent ecosystems from falling into an undesirable state, right? Most people get crazy when hear that, but anyway. Um, the literature is small. We proposed that a few years ago, and still we just got money for doing that. And, but the idea is terraforming. 
Terraforming uh, is a concept that comes uh, from literature that has to do with Mars. Mars is a, is a dead planet. It's very likely to be dead. And despite what you hear there and uh, here and there, I mean, we are not going to survive because we go to Mars. Mars, Mars actually is waiting there for killing us. It's a really, really bad place to go. So um, what about terraforming uh, with uh, biology? That means that we need to find out the way of building synthetic organisms, uh, but ha having to account the ecological context. So we need, it's not just to, I build something, I, I drop it in, into an ecosystem. I need to know about community ecology, and I, I need to develop a theory for that. It's, it doesn't exist. So you have something that scales up. So you, don't need, you need to create all the machines to do the, the engineering. Is that something that is replicates itself? I want to restore damaged states. Doesn't mean I want to restore the previous ecology. And the big thing that most of you might be thinking already is how, 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 how do you know nothing bad is happening? We all have seen the movie, right? As you know, in this movie, which is, uh, you have this character, it's a complete misrepresentation of any mathematician I ever met. Uh, you have this idea that is an interesting idea that, uh, yes, uh, you, have a, you have created a complex park, uh, but how do you know biology is not going to find out a way of messing with everything, right? And the point is, life finds its way. That's true, is it? Do, do we really know that? Because in the most discussions about uh, what's the implications of that, what you can predict or not, this is not a scientific discussion. We don't know. That's, that's the reality, okay? So we need, we need to create uh, um, a theoretical framework and go back, go to the lab to, to try. And, and have in mind that ecosystems do not tolerate everything. That ecosystems are complex systems. We know a lot about the community ecology. And not everything is going to be accepted. Not everything is going to, to damage the system. And have in mind, for those of you who are thinking of those invaders that they've made a lot of damage, the vast majority of invaders fail in ecosystems. So let me give you an example of what we have in mind. Because many people have been thinking, how do I create a microorganism with a genetic firewall? So something that when the task has been done, you kill yourself. It sounds very sophisticated, but cells are always ready for to kill themselves, right? The circuit is there. So that's a good example. It's what we call, we, we, we thought in four major classes of what we, we name uh, terraformation motifs. So four basic circuits that should be applied to a large variety of possibilities. That's one of them. It's the title, the title is uh, work and die. It's the kind of a Trumpian, Trumpian die, the kind of motto. That's a good illustration. Concrete cracks this is a really big problem in infrastructures. Uh, how do you deal with that? Well, the thing is that, and that's something that at least the uh, proof of concept is being, is, has been done, you can actually create a microorganism that you put inside the crack, which is a very basic environment. Many microorganisms don't like that. It's, it's very hostile for most of it. You put them, and they, uh, you are engineering so that they create calcium carbonate in a completely artificial uh, macromolecule that gets with the car car calcium carbonate, it makes a, a very hard mixture. And when they are feel everything, they are outside. The outside world is not nice. They, they die, right? Or can die. So that's what we call the ecological firewalls that you can build in many ways. For semi-arid ecosystems, that's the target that we are exploring in the lab. Um, one potential possibility is to use the soil crust. What you see here is a, an amazingly interesting uh, ecosystem that, in a way, does a lot of things in, in these systems. What about, since they are going to be really stressed in the future, what about creating microorganism that is taken from the system, you make a small modification, it, it puts in the system some kind of polymer that is likely to be non-natural, that allows more moisture to be captured, right? So you actually, you can show it, you create a symbiotic loop, it's completely artificial, but pushes the system outside the tipping point. Okay, that's a big idea. Nuria Conde there, she's, she's running our, our synthetic biology lab. Uh, she's a biohacker and I, I, is an extremely gifted person. And I put her here and mentioned the biohackers also because this is a big community that is growing. And for the people who think, what's gonna happen when someone, someone delivers microorganisms is, is happening. Uh, even we don't know the consequences of that. So we need the theory. And, and about the plastic, which is another possibility, it's been interesting to work on that because plastic, you know, is being a really problematic um, uh, byproduct of the Anthropocene uh, that you have in the, in the ocean, these uh, huge uh, plastic gyres. 
occupied by a plastisphere. So it's a, it's, a, it's a whole ecology that has been created over the years, right? And some people are saying, do you want to remove the plastic? It's an ecosystem there, right? It's, so um, we have been working in the lab on that and show that this is very broad conditions under which a synthetic microorganism could be able to actually control the plastic and make it to be in a stable state. And then a chemist came and said, do we really want to remove the plastic? Because, you know, it goes, it's going to do CO2. Maybe we can mineralize the plastic and make it completely hard and stable for thousands of years. That's another possibility. The microbiome is going to be one of our big references. For those of you who don't know, that's the frontier of biomedical research to a very large extent because the microbiome is, is a whole ecosystem. Actually, if you analyze the microbiome, you find out that all the regularities that you see in, in standard ecosystems are there. And people is already thinking in how to engineer the microbiome because many diseases are very likely to be caused by that. And I repeat this picture. Why is that? Because this is a synthetic ecosystem. This is an ecosystem that is in the middle of the, of the Atlantic Ocean in, in Ascension Island. When Darwin got there in his amazing travel, you know, Darwin was a great naturalist and he always described the, the magnificent things he found here and there. When he went to Ascension, Ascension was essentially as he said, a piece of dust, right? So he mentioned that to Hook, his, his friend, and they said, why not to bring hundreds of species of trees, palm trees, and, and all kinds of things, and see what happens, because we need, the, you know, we need the military there, and there's no water almost. So what happened is that they put that together, a completely artificial system, and nature builds, builds ecology. Nature finds its way, yes, finds its way into building a whole community, and if you are an ecologist, actually, the mountain that Darwin saw, which is, again, part of the piece of dust, is a, nat is a national park. It's called as, as green, green Mountain. And if you are an ecologist and go here and analyze everything you want about you know, nitrogen, flu fluxes, and diversity, you will say, this is a healthy, mature ecosystem. In 50 years, everything got transformed. And that goes into, actually, a question that I think is important, and we have to, be, to formulate. What do we want? Uh, we do want to survive in the, in the planet, um, and if we want, which I hope we, we, will, we do, um, maybe the biosphere is something that we are going, going to change. So what's going what's to wait for us in the future is something that we need, we need to know. And I, I, someone mentioned this sentence, something like that, before Alan Kay, someone else, a physicist of course, said that the future cannot be predicted, but futures can be invented. And I think the framework that I'm showing here, which needs really complex system science, is not anything that we can reduce to the lab. Um, it's a great place to actually get there. Thank you.